Hello, all of you big, gloriously wonderful people, and welcome back to a very special Astroneer. Today, we are going to be detonating over 1,000 hydrogen canisters. 1,040, to be exact. Uh, you'll see them all just a little bit later, but first, I wanted to give you, well, several minutes of what it took to make that scene you saw just a few seconds ago possible right now i am building atmospheric condensers uh these are necessary to extract gases from the atmosphere of the different planets and of course different planets have different gases uh but that's what's in production right now uh then i switched over to the large platform b uh because the atmospheric condensers need somewhere to sit the large platform b is the one that has a big square in the middle and then the little side slots off to each side you can kind of see it's silhouette there uh the platforms off to the side allowed me to put those medium platforms kind of like you see the resin over to the right and the plastic uh there uh between the printer and uh the something else over to the left can't quite tell what that is um anyway it allows me to put those medium storage on there so that as the gases output from the atmospheric condenser they go to medium storage automatically makes them a lot easier to manage and a lot easier to handle so i got all these platforms made i got all my atmospheric condensers created and you notice i'm putting them in a rocket ship and you might be thinking if you know astronaut brandon hey uh, hydrogen's on silva you're on silva buddy you're right however i need a lot of dynamite for this as well and we'll get to why uh and dynamite requires sulfur uh, sulfur with uh, carbon gets turned into explosive powder, which you can then, via your backpack, manufacture into dynamite or fireworks. So that required a trip to Calador, because Calador is where I already had um, some sulfur going. I did not realize I had this much already, though. Honestly, had I known I already had this much, I probably wouldn't have bothered making four atmospheric condensers and four platforms just to bring up here but i have them and i i'm not really sure at this point how much sulfur i'm gonna need because i don't know how much dynamite i'm gonna need each one of those canisters though will make uh five dynamite essentially they'll make five explosive powder but i went ahead and gathered up all that had already been produced i set up um the four additional atmospheric condensers on Calador. However, power was then an issue with all five of them running, the one that was there plus the four that I brought. I just wasn't making enough power on Calador. Plus, you may recall from the video... <laughs> this is awesome. Look at this landing. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, you may recall from the video, I don't know, what, a month ago or something, We the YouTube, we have a problem. My solar system broke, and so I don't get day-night cycles all the time. Um, so I went and grabbed a bunch of RTGs just in case the solar panel up on Calador didn't work. And instead of taking the ship, which honestly, taking the shuttle would have been quicker. But I didn't want to burn the fuel. Not that I'm in a short supply of resources to make more fuel. I've just never really used uh, the gateways to travel from planet to planet for a purpose. And I thought it'd be kind of fun. But of course, that means first going to the core, then from the core... To the mysterious satellite then from the satellite to the core of the planet you want to go to and then from the core of the planet you want to go to finally to the gateway engine that you're looking for so or not gateway engine sorry gateway chamber so that's what you're seeing right now is uh of course here i'm trying to figure out which one calidory is nothing's spinning it's a little tar uh, hard to tell because you, you lose your frame of reference but eventually made my way to the core of Calador, and then we'll make our way up to the planet's surface, where literally I went up. Um, I spent a lot of time on Calador, actually. I know it, we breezed right through it here in this video, um, but I spent close to two hours on Calador, uh, mainly getting resin to make uh, medium storage platforms, as well as some small little um, platforms that you're going to see that I put the RTGs on, those little guys. 
because those only take one resin each. And honestly, I was tired of getting resin. I just unpacked RTGs until I had enough power. And then I went ahead, teleported back down to Silva. And honestly, again, I didn't know how much sulfur I was gonna need. I've kind of not been back to Calador since. So an entire spaceship, or at least large shuttle, full of sulfur it was more than enough for me. Um, so now that I'm back on Silva, I need to start setting up for where I'm going to actually use the atmospheric condensers to get the hydrogen. Since I'm going to be playing with explosives, I didn't want a chance of an accident at my base. So it's at a safe distance from my base. So I need extenders to get me from my base, which isn't too far away, out here into the field. But I've got my platform set up. I've got my atmosphere condensers unloaded off of the large rover, and now it's just a matter of putting on the medium storage onto those platforms, then unpacking everything and getting it all started. And that's what we're going through now, is just going through, getting all these on there, got them finally on, and start the long unpacking process. So at this point, you're looking at about four and a half hours worth of work. All told, what you're going to see in this video today represents somewhere between eight and ten hours. I didn't record all of it, but I did record most of it. Um, I had close to eight hours of footage, but I feel like there was probably about two more hours of additional gameplay that I didn't record. So somewhere between eight and ten hours is, is the total of what we're looking at. And here's, you know, several hours condensed down into just under seven minutes. By the way, you are going to see today four explosions. I believe it's four. I mean, uh, no, five explosions. Uh, I'm going to test just a single stick of dynamite or a single pack of dynamite. Then we're going to see what eight dynamite do. Actually, it's really nine because I created a, a fuse system, which we'll talk about the fuse in a minute. Then we will blow up um, a single hydrogen using dynamite. Then we're going to blow up eight hydrogen Again, using a fuse system that I came up with. And then finally, the finale, we're going to have two different viewpoints of blowing up all 1,040 hydrogen canisters. Um, and it is literally a hydrogen bomb. You'll see some still images. You may have already gotten an impression of it from the thumbnail. This is just absurd. But I've got hydrogen under production, and then it became... This was the most time-consuming part right here, was getting the organic turned into carbon while also manufacturing a lot of medium storage platforms to store all of the hydrogen on. You can see I've got four there, loading them onto the rover, going to fill the rover up completely and just take a ton of them over there until I have enough. I mean... All in, I wound up with 13 large storage platforms, or, or sorry, extra large storage platforms, which those hold 10 medium storage each. So I had to have 130 medium storage. Those require two resin apiece, so that's 260 individual units of resin. Instead of going out and trying to find that much resin, instead, you can probably notice on the rover I had a drill and some canisters hooked up to that. I would just go drill a mountainside for about 30 seconds, fill up um, close to, what, 32 canisters, and then come back and I use the soil centrifuge to produce my resin as well as, oops, sorry, I bumped the microphone, but as well as my uh, organic that I then turned into carbon so that I could turn that into explosive powder so that I could then, as you can see here, start turning it into some dynamite. It was a long, long, long process. Um, about midway, I kind of wondered, is this really worth it? But then I kind of started getting into a rhythm. Uh, I started getting things going, and it wasn't really all that bad. Um, it just took time. Uh, and it spread out over about a week. It worked out just fine. You probably noticed I had a lot more RTGs than you're used to seeing at my base. Um, I made some more as well as uh, those that I had on my backpack from earlier. Just because with these eight atmospheric condensers going out here, my base was not producing anywhere near enough power to run all of these. Plus the uh, chemistry lab. I always forget what that thing's called, where you put other stuff in and do science to it. Um, and the printers. And I always keep my research chamber going. Even though I've researched everything, I just like researching more stuff. 
So once I got toward uh, the number of hydrogen canisters I was going to need, probably about the three quarters mark, I went ahead and started making the uh, extra large platforms here, extra large storage platforms. I have the rover completely stripped bare, the seats on the front and RTGs on the front. The rest of these are all ready to take all of these storage platforms. So I had about 13 total, can only carry nine at a time, so I had to make a second trip. And they do take a while to, to print, but there you can see a lot of them still loaded on the rover. I already have two over to the right uh, expanded and filled with hydrogen. And this is where the bomb construction actually began. I don't know if I should really be calling it a bomb. Probably get uh, flagged for YouTube. I don't know what else to call it, though, when you see this thing go off. I mean, it's hydrogen bomb. It is. It works a lot like a hydrogen bomb. And when you see... Um, what's left of this field when it's done oh my gosh so you can see i'm placing these as close together as possible um i'm also and you couldn't see in that shot you'll see it in a much later shot i have dynamite on the back sides kind of gapping or bridging the gap between the two just to ensure not that i'm really all that worried about it but just to be 100 percent positive that that explosion is going to continue and here you can see the whole thing is set up this jumps really close to the end. I've got it all completely set up, and now I'm putting out what I call my fuse, which is literally just, I, I kind of played around with it and figured out what is the maximum distance one dynamite can be away from the next dynamite and still ignite it from its own explosion. Found out what that distance is and then kind of shortened it just a little bit just to be sure. Um, Really, it's from the center of the rear axle to the center of the front axle on the rover. It made a perfect measurement. And as I started needing to make a curve and go a little bit up a hill, I put them even closer together. Again, I just wanted to be sure that this thing fired right the first time and that I did not have any problems at all. At this point, you're looking at probably about nine to 10 hours worth of work. There's everything set up in the background. I have the fuse all in place. Now I just wanted to, to well, I'm still putting the fuse in and I made sure of where I could reach the fuse like, it, to be able to set it off without being too close to the explosion. And I wound up putting a marker down there or a beacon just so I know right where I could stand and still be safe from the explosion of the dynamite. So two of my friends came along uh, over on the right back there in the red and white suit is not credit Rocky. And on the left is fat cubed. And the first thing we wanted to do was test just a single stick of dynamite. What kind of boom does it make? Not bad, a satisfying explosion. And I'm sorry for that click, click sound. It's just a glitch in the game from the explosions. You'll hear it a lot in this video. Um, we reloaded at one point to make it stop, but it came right back the next time we did an, uh, a, a detonation. So here I've set up a small fuse system. That's what I'm calling it, a fuse system. Um, and there are eight dynamite on a medium storage. So we're gonna see, do we get a bigger explosion from having more dynamite? Theory is yes, but let's see. Maybe. There we go. So the fuse worked as intended, and we can see where the fuse blew out a little bit of room, but then you can see definitely the crater where the dynamite was is much deeper and wider and more pronounced. And there's that clicking sound that's back. I, again, sorry, nothing I can do about it. It's just a glitch with the game, with the audio. Uh, I don't think we were ever intended to destroy things like this uh, in the game and so it's just not working properly i'm sure they'll get it fixed eventually but uh once i finally dug my way out of here it was time to go conduct our next explosion experiment which is one dynamite triggering one canister of hydrogen you can see it down there made a little hole just so most of the blast will be directed inward um and hopefully make a crater trying to find where i can trigger the thing there it is right there and watch as we all run So there you can see a little bit different than the explosion. Some uh, blue energy came out. Um, a slightly bigger hole than what we made with just a single dynamite and also more defined. The crater definitely had more defined edges. This is eight hydrogen with a fuse. Definitely a bigger boom and definitely a much bigger crater. Um, I'd say it's slightly bigger than the eight 
dynamite. So we definitely are getting more explosive powder or power from that. But that means it's time to go out, take a look at the bomb. This was the first time that uh, Rocket and Fat Cubed had seen the bomb at all. So we stop shy of it here where the fuse begins. And you can see I made this fuse very long. I had no idea what a safe distance was. I just guessed that, hey, they're starting to cease to render on my screen. Maybe that's far enough away. But you can see it's a pretty long fuse. And there you can see all 13 of the platforms. 12 of them are arranged um, in four rows of three that are front, front to back with one on the end. And I put them close enough that a lot of the um, medium storages would clip into one another so that we would get a good chain reaction. You can see the dynamite I have in place to ensure that it all works. It's all lined up. I'm just making sure everything's still in place because I really don't want to spend all the time redoing this and have it, you know, because it only halfway blew up or something. So we checked it out, made sure that everything was in place. And I headed back over to where the fuse was. And in just a second, Fat Cubed is going to go to the other end of the field and build just a little column so that he can also record his vantage point of the explosion. And at this point, I'm just going to stop talking for a minute and let you watch. Yeah, it looks like that cube is a little too close. Here's everything slowed down to one quarter speed. And finally, here are some stills. This is the exact frame from my perspective of when the hydrogen exploded. Look at that. The having, wow. And then the same thing from Fat Cube's perspective. Just an unbelievable amount of energy. I was shocked, honestly, when I saw those frames. But take a look at the hole that this made. Sure, eight made a big hole, but look what a thousand and forty can do. Yeah, it completely blew away all the soil and the top part of the first cave biome, exposing the caves down below. We'll get another look at it here uh, in daylight. I built a ramp, actually, uh, along the side wall here just so we could walk down there. Because down inside of it, you really get a sense of scale for how much energy was released in this explosion over to the right you can see kind of the extent of the explosive blast uh with that one not round but that that roundish uh explosion that's on the wall there's another in the far left that we just saw for a second there we're down on what is a cave floor this didn't get blasted this is this looks like it's all fine though i think there is some debris down here from it but that gives you a sense that yeah rocket wanted to drive the rover down eat um this just gives you a sense of the scale of exactly what 1,040 hydrogen canisters exploding at the same time can do. So what's the next project? Well, we're thinking about maybe trying to uh, blow a hole this big all the way to the core um, by lining up uh, a bunch of uh, storage platforms on a ramp we build to the core, or maybe 
just using individual hydrogen canisters in a complete uh, ring around the equator of the planet and seeing if they can all blow up and blow a trench into the planet and just how deep it goes. Basically, we're trying to break the game. I was surprised it didn't crash um, and that it handled it as well as it did. Uh, the frames dropped a little bit during the explosion, but not too bad. By the way, you notice a lot of those platforms are just kind of hovering over there in space. Yeah, they're just, I don't think the game knew what to do with them. That it just couldn't have one fell and one kind of shifted to the side a little bit. And one in the middle kind of kicked up, but that's it. The rest of them are all pretty much still in place. And every one of those hydrogen canisters are gone. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun creating this video. I do mean a lot of fun. Uh, it was a lot of work, but man, getting my friends in here with me and then actually setting these explosions off. Even just the single stick of dynamite was a lot of fun. Um, but this, I never anticipated this crater. I knew it was going to be a big boom. I did not know this would happen. But until next time, I'm Brandon reminding you to stay vainglorious.